Here now is H.M.S. Richards, the voice of prophecy speaker. His subject, the Holy Spirit. We were following our guide to the depths of the Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. Several times he stopped and turned to us and said, Keep close to the guide. This is a dangerous place. So we followed the guide with the light. There are pitfalls in that cave, the so-called bottomless river, and miles of dark corridors and tunnels. There would be no chance for a man to find his way out of the cave without a guide or a light. So it is with the travelers in this world. There's no chance for us to get through the dark wilderness alone. We need the light of God's Word and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God sent His Spirit to guide us on this important journey. If we attempt to walk independently of Him, we shall stumble into the deep darkness of eternal night. Shortly before His crucifixion, our Savior made a precious promise. It was this, I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. John 14:16. Then He declared that He would return to His Father. In spite of this promise of the Comforter, the disciples were despondent and sorrowful. Then he explained why it was necessary for him to go away. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So we see that the Holy Spirit came to comfort God's people and is really the vicar of or representative of Christ on earth, the continued life of Jesus. It is actually written in Scripture, the Lord is that Spirit, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now we find that the Holy Spirit has been at work in the world from the beginning and is first mentioned in Genesis 1, verse 2, where we read the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. We read of the Holy Spirit in Isaiah 40.13, and other places. The Spirit, all through the Old Testament, inspired the prophets, led his people, and guided them. No one can flee from the presence of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 139, 7. How then is it that Jesus speaks of the Spirit's coming after his departure? For he says, If I go not away, the Comforter will not come. How is it that the Apostle John tells us that the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified, John 7, 39. The answer is that when Jesus was crucified, went back to heaven, and sat at the right hand of God, the Holy Spirit came in a new way. He came as the representative of Christ, the vicar of Christ, no longer to operate independently, but to speak for Christ, to testify of Christ, to be the head of the church, to show the church the things of Christ, to dwell in the hearts of men in Christ's name and to exalt the name and power of our wonderful Savior. In fact, speaking of the coming of the Comforter, Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, John 14, 18. It is through the Holy Spirit that Christ dwells in the hearts of believers. For we read in Romans 8, 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Notice how important it is that we believe in and accept the presence and work of the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus said, He shall testify of me, John 15, 26. He shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you, John 16, 13. But that isn't all. Turn to John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's the work of the Spirit. There is a guide in the deserts of Arabia called the Dove Man. He is said never to lose his way. How does he do it? 
He carries in his breast a homing pigeon with a very fine cord attached to its leg. Whenever in doubt as to which way to take, the guide throws the bird into the air, and the homing dove quickly strains at the cord to fly in the direction of home. Then its master knows unerringly the direction to take. No wonder they call this guide the dove man. So the Holy Spirit, the heavenly dove, is not only able but willing to lead us in the right way, to guide us at last to our home eternal. Please remember that at the baptism of our Savior, the Holy Spirit appeared in bodily form as a dove, lighting upon the head of Christ. And the voice of God declared that this was his beloved Son. In Acts 10.38, we find a reference to this, how that, quote, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. This was the anointing of Christ for his ministry, anointed with the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. The word ghost is the old English word for spirit. Listen to the words of Martin Luther concerning the Holy Spirit. The believing man hath the Holy Ghost. Where the Holy Ghost dwelleth, he will not suffer a man to be idle, but stirreth him up to all exercises of piety and godliness and of true religion, to the love of God with patient suffering of afflictions, to prayer, to thanksgiving, to the exercise of charity toward all men. And that's true. The Holy Spirit came in mighty power upon the early disciples on the day of Pentecost. They went forth and stirred the world with the gospel. Hearts were changed. Thousands died as martyrs. Nothing could resist the Christian message in spirit-filled hearts. What's the matter with us today? Hugh T. Kerr says that we have substituted relativity for reality, psychology for prayer, an inferiority complex for sin, social control for family worship, auto-suggestion for conversion, reflex action for revelation, the spirit of the wheels for the power of the spirit. In the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C., there sits at the Speaker's desk a man who knows parliamentary law, a real master of it. The Speaker may sometimes be at a loss to know just the proper procedure. In some parliamentary tangle, he may not know what to do, but this expert knows exactly what should be done. Without being asked, he whispers a solution to his superior. He anticipates difficult situations, has an instantly ready answer. Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. And the word used here is the Greek word paraclete, which in reality is a combination of two words meaning one call to stand by, like the man at the speaker's side, ready in all times of perplexity. So the Holy Spirit who came at Pentecost stands by to give his counsel. He shall teach you all things and bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He will guide you into all truth, John 16, 13. Let us not forget that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth, and he is also the author of the Scriptures. For holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, 2 Peter 1, 21. So whatever the counsel the Holy Spirit gives to our hearts, it will always be in harmony with what he has already said in Holy Scripture. And when he has come, Jesus said, he will reprove or convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment, John 16, 8. Conviction of sin comes through the Holy Spirit. We need to be careful we do not grieve the Spirit so we will have no more conviction of sin. In the north of England, where they've been digging coal for many generations, miners go into tunnels miles and miles away from the shaft. There's always danger of becoming lost. Once two old miners did lose their way, their lights finally went out. They were in danger of losing their lives. After wandering around for a long time, one of them felt a light touch on his cheek. He sprang forward, exclaiming, I felt it. They pressed on in the direction in which the air was moving, and so reached the shaft. So there comes a time when the Spirit of God, like a breath, touches your soul. May be gentle, faint, you hardly recognize it, but, friend, do not disregard it. Thank God that he has spoken to you, convicted you of your sins convinced you of the righteousness of his commandments and the light of his truth. Give yourself to be led by the Spirit, and you will come out of darkness, out of bondage, out of sorrow, into the light of obedience. The Holy Spirit cannot lead us into truth unless we're willing to be led. 
one of America's best-known preachers and one of his friends were floating down a great river in a boat. They sought for human habitation, found none. Finally, wet, cold, exhausted, they drew their boat up on a sandbar. Groping in the darkness of the night, they gathered a few pieces of driftwood. After several failures, they succeeded in lighting a fire. How carefully they tended that fire. They hovered over it, protected it from the wind. At length it blazed up brightly, illuminated their dismal surroundings, warmed their cold bodies. They realized as never before what a friend a fire can mean. Let us not forget the metaphor of the apostle. Quench not the spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 Let us be careful not to put out the fire which the Holy Spirit of God lights in our hearts. Notice what the Spirit does. The Spirit speaks, 1 Timothy 4.1, teaches, 1 Corinthians 2.3, bears witness, Romans 8.16, makes intercession, distributes gifts, invites the sinner. After the day of Pentecost, the gospel was preached with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, 1 Peter 1.12. The Holy Spirit is the source of power for God's people. It is through the Holy Spirit that Jesus fulfills his promise, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And here's a warning for us from the very words of the Apostle himself in Ephesians 4.30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Back in the days before the flood, the whole world grieved the Spirit of God. And the Lord said, we're reading Genesis 6.3, My spirit shall not always strive with man, the limit was reached. The flood came and swept that world away. But God's Spirit never ceases striving with a man as long as there is hope of his salvation. David's prayer was, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Psalm 51.11 Friend, is God's Spirit striving with you? A young lady came to Ira Peak, evangelist at a youth camp. She had a long list of questions and problems. In the service that night, the Holy Spirit spoke to her heart, as it did to many others. At the close of the meeting, she came to the minister and said, Pastor, I do not need to discuss those questions with you now. I was the problem myself, but I have found Christ. Who is the answer to all life's questions? Friends, let us realize that we are our own worst problem. And when the Spirit of God speaks to us, let us surrender. When we have made our full decision, our full consecration, yes, our full surrender, then God can use us and guide us in truth and guide us in service and make our lives a blessing. Jesus said that just as parents know how to give good gifts to their children, so our Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Luke eleven thirteen. Let us ask and receive. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening powers, kindle a flame of sacred love in these cold hearts of ours.